Now, I like movies. A lot. Sometimes I'm even too forgiving when it comes to making my reviews. I mean, I never go to the cinema hoping they'll be bad. I also don't usually review movies to take dumps of hyperbolic negativity upon them. But as always, I aim to be honest. So what positive things can I say about this film? Sound design and sound editing are top notch. You can tell the visual effects team put in a lot of hard work. And they've provided some cool and occasionally creative visual touches. Mark Wahlberg is likeable as the lead. Anthony Hopkins, by far the best aspect of this film. He always sells his lines with such gusto, even if he hasn't the foggiest of what he's actually saying. All of these elements come together and try their darndest to convince you you're watching a good movie. Here's the thing. You're not. Transformers The Last Knight is bombastic, overstuffed and tiresome. And boy does it desperately need a more focused narrative. No doubt there'll be complaints that this movie doesn't have a script. To the movie's credit, that is wildly untrue. There's no way you could come up with something this ridiculously convoluted and not write it down first. During every action scene, I found myself asking why the characters are where they are and how they got there. More importantly though, why do I care? Tell me, movie, why do I give a turd? But this is Transformers. Whatever script existed was always going to be slave to the Bay machine. Any hint of subtlety would have been beaten to a pulp and fed a stick of dynamite. As for the plot itself, if I can call it that, the film literally loses the plot in way too many plots. You want me to give you a synopsis? Okay, I'll... Try. The movie starts and we're in the time of King Arthur. We find out that the wizard Merlin's staff is actually made from Transformers magic. Now we've been introduced to the film's first MacGuffin, it's time to fast forward to modern day. Where we find Mark Wahlberg saving a bunch of Twelvies from this robot drone thing. Wahlberg then stumbles upon this ancient Transformer who gives him a medallion. Apparently this makes Marky Mark some kind of chosen one. Which is completely original and not lazy in the slightest. Oh, but he's not the only chosen one in this movie. And now we have two MacGuffins to worry about. Meanwhile, in space, Optimus Prime is just drifting for some reason. He's supposed to be looking for his home planet, which was supposedly destroyed? I don't know, I think we're just expected to go with it. Then, back on Earth, the film's English leading lady is introduced playing polo. Because, you know, that's what... British people do. Then she goes back to her ultra sophisticated job of being some kind of historical art and culture lecturer slash guide person because that's what British people do. Frankly I don't think the film knows what her job is either. Then Anthony Hopkins starts stalking her because British people. Well actually the film does have its reasons. I like my version better. Then there's this junkyard hiding Transformers from the authorities. Wahlberg misses his daughter from the previous movie. Bad Transformers show up. There's a chase scene. Oh yeah, and there's this giant moon planet thing that's coming towards the Earth because it thinks the Earth is evil. Like the actual physical planet is evil. Well, it turns out the Earth is evil and it literally starts growing devil's horns. Did I say the film was subtle? I'm sorry, I just can't take this seriously. Sure, you're not supposed to. I get that. But it's just too much of a mess and not a fun one. It's constantly jumping around trying to please different demographics. But it does too much of too little for anyone to care all that much. However, the main reason we don't care about these events? The movie just doesn't give us much of a reason to care about the people to whom they're happening. The male lead is an inventor we never see inventing. He's a father who has a daughter we never see. He's also tough. That's the most development we get out of any of the characters. And that's only because we're verbally told these things. The female lead, played by Laura Haddock, is supposed to be this intelligent, independent woman who is isn't too preoccupied with finding men. The movie seems to be preoccupied with finding her cleavage. But that's another story. Just when you think they're setting up a compelling female character, the movie slaps you in the face as if to say, Whoa, you're expecting too much from us. Aside from maybe Anthony Hopkins, most of the characters are forgotten almost as soon as they're introduced. Just when you're about to get invested in someone's story, the movie interrupts and leaves them hanging. Then there are the irritating presences. These are the blatant stereotypes that litter the film with, well, garbage. The worst offender, in my opinion, is the arrogant NASA scientist. He wants the military to resort to physics and logic and in order to defeat the global threat instead of fantasy robots. I have no doubt that this abomination is meant to represent the more critical thinking members of the audience. This is director Michael Bay's subtle way of saying, audiences, shut up and suspend your disbelief. I'm sorry, Mr. Bay, but you don't get to talk to me like that. If you want people to fork out money for your so-called escapist masterpiece, don't smugly stick your finger up at them. How about you go home, watch Mad Max Fury Road and learn how to shoot a proper action movie. I think I might have taken that a bit too personally. In all honesty though, I feel like every positive thing the movie had going for it becomes a negative by the time the credits roll. And as much respect as I have for Hopkins, Wahlberg and the countless sound and visual effects technicians, I got straight out of my chair as soon as the credits started. But wait! There's a little tease for the next movie! You can't miss that! Oh yeah, that's right. I don't care. This film is rated N for nope.
you may as well save yourself some money and give this one a miss. Till next time, motion peeps. <laughs>